Hello everybody, this is KXL Radio, and once again we're fortunate to have Mickey Dale here, voice of the Imperial Tigers, and he's going to give us a weekly preview of what's coming up. Take it away, Mickey. A lot of neat things, some big games last week too, including the Imperial Tigers, which we saw here in Imperial, winning a score of 28-6 to in a game that they led all the way, well they had a shutout all the way to five minutes left in the ball game, but their quarterback, Jaden Ayala, had a great game. He completed 11 to 21 passes, 173 yards, three touchdowns in the game, and four different players caught passes in the game. Mario Gaxio, Isaiah Perez, and freshman Darren Hueso, who had a 70-yard screen pass that went on for a touchdown. And uh, as a freshman, he was just sparkling last week. And looking forward to not only this week, but the rest of the season with this young man, his brother Brandon, came in as a running back after Royce Freeman had graduated from Imperial, and Brandon gained over 4,100 yards rushing, scored 45 touchdowns, and just was electrifying throughout his career in Imperial. Now his younger brother Darren is here. It's going to be exciting to watch that. Both wear number two as they did, as Brandon did a few years back. That'll be pretty exciting. I also, I also ran for 80 yards on seven carries. And J.J. Jimenez is the starting running back and gets uh, the heavy stuff on the inside, ground out 56 yards as the Tigers totaled up 357 yards of offense in that game against West Hills. And we mentioned last week in the games between West Hills and Imperial that this was the sixth game that is between those two schools, and the home team has won every game. So I mentioned last week that – the game was going to be in Imperial. We hoped Imperial would come through. And then I'm going to try to put in with CIF to see if all the games can be held in Imperial for the rest of the time. <laughs> I don't know if that'll work out, but I'd like to try that. Now, Tigers defense also was stout too, Curtis. Uh, like I said, going up until the final five minutes of the game, they were posting a shutout. Darian Romo had 11 tackles. Samuel Rubacaba and Danny Esquivez uh, combined to split 18 tackles in half and uh, and then there was a big uh, hit by Escobes on their punter on a, a fumble punt and uh, he just nailed the punter forced a fumble inside the six yard line a uh, quick score for the Tigers on that so he was very impressive that fumble was recovered by William Kwan and uh, Escobes and Mario Tapia had blocked field goals in the ball game and Bo Zinn had a 56 yard kickoff return in the ball game as well so it was pretty exciting for the Tigers last week against West Hill. Well, it sounds like the, the whole team, uh, the various uh, factions of the team have been coached really well. And this Hueso, Hueso, 70-yard screen pass for a freshman? Yes, and as soon as he caught the ball, he went toward the visitor's side sideline, turned the corner, turned the Jets on, and he was gone. He just ran away from everybody. So he's got some good speed. Uh, he actually had... Three touchdowns in the game that were called back on touchdown or on penalties. So he was something else the other night. It's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to this week's game against Vincent Memorial. Two teams well, that I haven't met in almost two decades. Well, I'm going to start calling Hawaii so lightning. lightning. Yeah, he is. I mentioned it last week. Thing is lightning in a bottle. It was really <laughs> exciting. To watch. And hopefully, we do whatever he does on the field justice by calling it. Well, I think you did, Mickey, and uh, Vincent Memorial. That should be an interesting game. It really will be. It's the first time the two teams have met since 2008. And in that season, the Tigers won two big games in that by scores of 62 to nothing and 55 to nothing. But don't expect that this week. David Wong is the head coach there now, and he has done a tremendous job with the Scots. He's won 69 games, lost 32 in his 10 years, now beginning his 10th year at uh, Vincent Memorial. They were the Division 5 CIF in the title game last year. Uh, and again, they start off with a victory this week. Looked good in that. They defeated uh, Monta Vista of Spring Valley by a score of 21 to nothing in that one. And in last, uh, what we expect to see on their team this year, six all-leaguers are back with 12 returning starters, and that includes Roberto Carranza, who gained 411 yards, added 39 receptions for another 532 yards from last year's team. And also Joe Cervantes added another 256 yards rushing and 30 pass receptions for 466 yards 
right, or receiving in the season for the Scots last year. So they got a couple of really good ball players there. It'll be interesting to who they have as quarterback. The graduating quarterback uh, has left a void there. So that's something they're going to work with. But David Long has done such a great job down there. I have no doubt that he's going to find somebody, and they will be very good. It should be a pretty tough contest on Friday. Well, you know, Vincent, to me, has always been a class act. So they, they always hold a small place in my heart. And I, I will do everything I can, Mickey, to be rooting for the Tigers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it'll be tough for you. But yeah, yeah, you're hoping for the country with a win, but I think it's going to be a close game. It ought to be a good game. It'll be here in Imperial. And like I said, first time in almost two decades that these two schools are facing each other. They were back in the Desert League way back when, and now, of course, Imperial's in the Imperial Valley League. And so it's two old foes from way back that are facing each other Friday night. It should be exciting. It is exciting. All right. What else you got for us, Nikki? Well, Southwest, they're going to be on KXO on Friday night with Carol Buckley and John Dribble. They'll be hosting Banning in their game, the Banning Broncos from just north of us up in Riverside County. And that team last year in the game up in Banning, the Eagles presented first-year head coach Pete Blankfoot Jr. with his first victory. It was a 24-14 to win last year in Banning. They hope to duplicate that win this weekend. As we mentioned, it'll be live on KXO Radio on YouTube and on KXORadio.com on the Internet with Carol Buckley and John Griffel. They'll be calling on the action from El Centro as uh, Southwest takes on Banning. So that'll be a good one there. Well, that's cool. Give us give us some else, other details that uh, – share some of your wisdom with us, Mickey. Well, uh, as far as the other teams, they're – all the schools other than Southwest last week in the Imperial Valley all won, which yet you, you had two local teams, so one of them had to have lost the game, of course. But all the other teams that are in the Valley all picked up victories last week. And some of those were on the road. Those are never easy. And some were pretty impressive, including Central, who will be on the radio next week. Central went up to Fontana to take on Eureka Hills, which is a team that last year won their CIF championship and actually went all the way to the state championship game before losing to Marin Catholic. And Central dispatched them 38-6 to in Fontana last Friday night. So pretty exciting game for Central to win that one. And they'll uh, be on the road again this week. They'll be, uh, let's see, trying to think. Palm Desert. There. Palm Desert, that's right. Palm Desert, who played Brawley last week, and that's supposed to be up there to face the Aztecs next week. Then the following week, they'll be at home against the Bulldogs of Ramona. So that's what Central has in store. And uh, so that'll be pretty exciting football as well there. Well, and it, it'll kind of give us a judge of the Bell game because we can look at how Brawley did against uh, Palm Desert, and then we'll get to watch uh, exactly. what Central does. Now, from what I've sent, Central and Holtville, are going to be real powerhouses this year, and right. uh, and Imperial. They, I be, you guys sound like you're improved. I, mean, I think the Imperial is improved, and I think that it's going to come down to Central Brawley and Imperial for the championship. Although Plexico may have something to say about it, as they keep improving each year, and uh, so I think it's just going to be an exciting Imperial Valley League play. And like you said, when you look at teams that have common opponents. Raleigh played Palm Desert last week, came up with a 36-20 to 20 win in that, and now Central will play Palm Desert. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, Central does against Palm Desert. You can kind of get an early uh, discussion of what's going to happen in the Bell game later on this year. Well, and I, I want to let everybody know that uh, there's a uniqueness about Imperial football. It is always exciting. There's always turnovers, long returns, and it's always fun to listen to, Mickey, and you and George do a great job calling those games. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. It is exciting to watch them. We try to make it exciting, too, and we try to exude our excitement over to you as a listener, and so it, that makes it kind of fun for us when we see big plays happen, uh, watching Bo Zinn uh, running on that long 56-yarder, uh, I think, on a kickoff return. And, uh, and knowing that his grandparents, Betty and Larry Zinn, are uh, heading up to Imperial Quarterback Club, one of our sponsors, and I've known both of them for a long time. And his dad, Matt, was a Tiger footballer a couple of decades ago, and he's up as a firefighter battling the Boise Fire up in Northern California. So uh, it kind of ties everything in, and it's exciting to see Bo do so well last week, playing at safety, broke up a couple long passes, and then a long run in that, and, and that just makes it more exciting for us. 
Well, and I'd like to encourage everybody that's an Imperial Tiger fan and either other football fans in the Valley, the Imperial Quarterback Club is one of the best booster clubs for high school football in Imperial Valley. And they've been around a long, long time. In fact, there, there was a scoreboard on the north side of Tiger Stadium, then called Tiger Stadium, not Shimamoto Simpson Stadium, that was put in and completely funded by the Imperial Quarterback Club. And at the time, my grandfather was the president of it. My dad was later president. My uncle Lindell has been with the Quarterback Club forever. And uh, their roots go very, very deep with the Imperial Quarterback Club here in this city. Well, it seems like you missed your turn there, Mickey. I did. I was so busy <laughs> announcing games and doing television and doing uh, writing stories in the newspaper that yeah, I didn't. I didn't have the time to get down to the meetings, and it's not fair not to be at the meetings and, and be there. But but they've been very important to us throughout my lifetime, as as well as many gener generations. When you're talking about going back into the 1950s. Well, and you don't have to become a member of the club to support them financially. And, no, uh, and no, not at all. And we should all consider that. And, right. And in our commercial, it, it points out to the phone number that you can call to get donations to them. And uh, they're always open to donations to help out. And, and all those funds completely, 100% go back to the athletic program. In the period. And if you're a Brawley Wildcat alumni, they'll let you give money anonymously. Yeah, that's right. You could do that too. You don't have to say where it's from. You can just send the money. Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> exactly. All right, Mickey. What else should we look for this week? And well, just a few other things. I want to mention some other kids that are that are playing. Matt Gutierrez. You mentioned Brawley. He's the quarterback up at Brawley. I think he's probably the best quarterback in the county right now. He's just incredible. He threw a touchdown pass to Sergio Garcia and Brandon Forrest scored a rushing touchdown, and also Garcia had an interception return for a touchdown to lead the, the Wildcats over the Aztecs up there. And they'll be playing Canyon Hills on Friday. And uh, Clexco Bulldogs, they picked up a big win at Blythe against Palo Verde, 28 to 21, and almost exclusively on the ground. They rolled up 255 yards of rushing against the Yellow Jackets defense. that has traditionally been very, very big. So that's a big, big one for the Garnet and Gold over in Plexico. He had touchdowns by Jose Fernandez and scored by Sean Torres and that. A pair of touchdowns by Fernandez in that one. And there in San Diego County, Friday, they meet Castle Park. And then Holtville had a big win over Southwest, as we mentioned, 64 to nothing. Had a lot of different players for touchdowns. Uh, the defending Division 5 AA champions uh, had Alonzo Cuevas through three scoring touchdowns to Raul Braseno, Brayden Terrell, and Alan Carrillo, and then in the rushing department, Enrique Armas had a pair of rushing touchdowns, and then Tito Cleveland Prather, Landon Kellum, and Cuevas added rushing touchdowns, and the Vikings will be in Mission Bay. They're going to be facing the Buccaneers up there. They're always tough at home. So it'll be a big game for Hobo to travel up to Mission Bay on Friday night. And then one early game, as Calipatria has a short week, they'll be playing on Thursday night at Desert Mirage after a big win in Bermuda Dunes over Desert Christian Academy, 48 to 27. So it's good to see Calipatri come up, second year head coach, uh, Leon that's down there and uh, they pick up a, a victory last week. And uh, they, we started to see them at the beginning of the season, start a little slow, then it'll grow better and better and better. The season goes on, they open this year up with a victory. So good for the Hornets and good for the city of Calipatri. Well, and Calipatri has always uh, taken football very seriously as it relates to the kids in the program. And, and uh, there's another team that has a small place in my heart. Yeah, same here. They were one of our rivals playing in Imperial. It was Imperial, Calipatri, and Hopeville were the big rivals in the Valley at that time in the old Chaparral League. So, yeah, we, we had some knockdown dragouts up in Calipatri over the years when we were playing ball and George was playing and when I was playing. And so... Uh, it's always fun to see now that we don't have them as rivals, but hope that they do well on the field and Calipatria starts up with a big victory. And they have a beautiful facility up there. They do. They've, they've reeved on the football field. They got a new gymnasium a few years ago. And so, yeah, they, they fixed up stuff up there nice. And I'm, I want to go up to a football game one of these times. If I get a chance, maybe they have a Thursday game and I can get up there to see the Hornets play at home on their football field. Okay. Well, always be careful what you wish for.
And, uh, yeah, I know. I, I've got all my weeks lined up. I've got all of Imperial Games all the way into November. I have one off week from Imperial Games. We're going to be in Kansas because that's where three of our grandsons are playing football, which my wife and I have not seen our grandkids play football. So we're going to race back there for a week and a half, watch them play football, then race back here to continue the IBL action. Hey, we should carry that game on the radio. That would be fun. The Mead Buffaloes. You got to real out go bust. <laughs> okay, very cool. Hey, Mickey, thanks for all that you do. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to your game this Friday. And uh, I, I want to encourage everybody that Imperial Valley football is I, it's on an upswing this year. And I think we it should is. all be proud of it. We should all be proud. And there's games all over the place. You know, you can go to a game and listen to another game. That's the beauty of it all. So you can go to one game and then turn on KXO and listen to Southwest this week or go on to YouTube or uh, KXORadio.com and listen to us. So you can be at one game and listen to us on another. Well, some of us have to do that, and it can get a little confusing. It we, can, we, yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> I remember uh, years ago with KXO uh, uh, covering one Little League All-Star game and listening to another and taking notes on both to write it up for the newspaper so yeah i know what you mean all right all right everybody hey we thank you for stopping by we hope to catch you friday and remember the youtube games chat is active and as long as you mind your manners you can tell us whatever you want you know and one of the neat things too on that with it going all over the world levi mentor one of our top linemen on the imperial team his uncle mike mentor is in mongolia he is uh in Mongolia, uh, and uh, he and his wife and their family are down there. We heard him speak at church a, a few years ago, and he listens in every Friday night from Mongolia. We had Austin Bonitas last week who played at Imperial in Duluth, Georgia, listening last week. So it's kind of fun when we know where people are at. So go on to that uh, uh, chat that's on YouTube. We'll find your names on that, and we'll give you a little shout out on the game. All right. Hey, Mickey, thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next week with this. We'll catch Mickey and George Friday night on KXO Radio. And uh, let's have a great week, everybody. Yeah, looking forward to it.